Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride back again with another video. And today I'm setting up my bullet journal for May with a stained glass theme. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk to you more about them a little later on in the video. This is a theme that I've had in mind for at least a couple years now. And this month, for whatever reason, I wanted to go for it. I felt ready. The stained glass itself is inspired by some old scans of stained glass catalogs that I found on Pinterest. They are so cool to look at, and I was incredibly inspired by all of the different shapes of stained glass windows, all of the different possible designs and color combinations. And I think that's really the coolest thing about a stained glass theme, that it can look so different depending on the artist who's creating it. Stained glass can be incredibly simple to ridiculously complex. It can be more geometric and structured looking. It can be almost Art Nouveau style, very organic lines, botanical inspired elements. And of course, stained glass can be so many different colors and so many different combinations of colors, which just leaves you with endless possibilities, which is so much fun. I decided to start by inking absolutely everything and then letting the ink fully dry before going in and adding color using my watercolors. I'm using my Secura Micron Zero Two Nib to do all of the inking. I'll be painting directly into my bullet journal because I'm using an art journal of notebook and their paper holds up to watercolor so well. As always, all of the supplies I'm using will be linked in the description box, so check that out if you're looking for something. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to add it. So as I said, these designs were inspired by these old stained glass catalogs. I did combine designs from different windows and alter things to make them a little bit easier to draw by hand. There were definitely some designs that I thought were so stunning, but the idea of trying to create them by hand broke me out into a cold sweat. So I definitely simplified a lot of the designs here. I'm heavily relying on my ruler and my circle template to try to make things even, but I'm also not stressing over things being perfect or 100% symmetrical. Life is too short. <laughs> A fun side benefit to starting with all the inking first and then going in with color is that I was able to scan these spreads without the color added as well as after I'd painted them so I can provide my patrons an option of essentially a coloring book of these spreads as well as the finished versions if they want to choose their own color palette, which I thought was super fun. I also heavily modified the upper central circular window here because I wanted to incorporate an M for May somewhere on the spread without it being completely separate from the art. So I did a lot of research into stained glass windows with letters incorporated. I looked up a bunch of old timey fonts, different styles of older fonts, till I came across one that I thought might work and tried to incorporate it in with some more botanical elements, some sprawling crawling vines to tie in a little bit better with the rest of the art. Once I finished inking the cover page, I moved over to the quote page and this one I wanted to combine the feeling of a stained glass window, obviously, but also an old book. When you're reading a fairy tale and you have the super fancy first letter of the paragraph that's huge and really ornamental, I feel like there's a word for these letters and I learn this word over and over again and then I always forget it when I need it. Let me know in the comments if you remember what these big ornamental letters are called. But I wanted that vibe and then to have the quote written after that as if it was a page from an old book.
I actually managed to find a quote that was about stained glass that I really liked, so everything was coming together perfectly. So the quote I decided to use was, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is a light from within. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Moving on to my calendar spread, again, I'm doing all of the inking first. And for my calendar, I wanted to continue on, of course, with the stained glass vibe. I wanted the calendar itself to look like two panes of stained glass windows, and then to do the header in a bit of a Art Nouveau stained glass inspired font. The calendar itself is super simple. It's literally a regular calendar with a bit of a frame, but I made sure to leave a couple little gaps in each corner so that I could add these little sparkles to tie in the design from the cover and quote pages. For the header, I went with a bit of an Art Nouveau inspired font. I feel like Art Nouveau fonts and stained glass go together so perfectly. So it's definitely more of an organic, loopy, curved type of font. And you can find a bunch of inspiration for different cool fonts searching on Pinterest. Flipping over to my weekly spreads and starting by cutting out the tabs, I'm doing the same weekly layout that I've been doing for a little while, which is my modified rolling weekly, focusing on monthly task lists for work and personal, and then having little spaces for each day, as well as a section for, for priority tasks for the week. I definitely wanted to pull the theme into my weeklies and I was debating different ways to do it and feeling a bit conflicted about how much I really wanted to take it there because I didn't want to overdo it. And I ended up deciding to do four little stained glass panes in each corner that could be visible from whatever weekly you're on. The top two are acting as headers for my monthly task lists, and the bottom two are just for decoration. And then on the weeklies themselves, I'm just adding frames for each day that I'm painting in colors that I've pulled from the other art on these spreads to tie it all together a little bit more without going super overboard. I also thought it'd be fun if the tabs themselves had a bit of a stained glass vibe. I decided to go with a simple grid just to make it a little bit easier to recreate on multiple tabs. Of course, as I was working on my weeklies, Chewie decided it was time for a snuggle and that the most comfortable place he could lie down was on top of my bullet journal, which was super helpful of him. <laughs> I thought I would keep in some of the footage of him because I know y'all love kitty cameos. And for whatever reason, maybe it's just where my filming table is in our new house. They don't hang out on the table as much as they did in our old apartment or even our old, old apartment. But it was a rare occurrence for him to hop up here while I was filming. So I kept it in. Now that I finished all my weeklies, I'm flipping back to the beginning and I'm going to start painting. So I'm grabbing some watercolor. As always, I'm using my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. I also grabbed one tube of gouache just because I didn't have a bright true yellow in the watercolor formula. My color palette here is yellow, rust, green, and brown, which will not be talking to anyone who has watched my content because y'all know what kind of colors I like. But again, as I said earlier, the fun thing about stained glass is it can be whatever colors you want. So these could easily be pinks and purples and blues. They could be teals. They could be whatever you want. I'm watering down my colors so that I can start with a lighter wash of color and build up some of that intensity or darkness if I decide I want a little bit more contrast or a little bit more punch. 
because I'm watering down the colors, but I don't wanna to go too overboard on how much water I'm slopping onto the paper. Like I said, our journal of notebooks can handle quite a bit of water, I'm always impressed, but you still don't want to overdo it on how much water you're putting on the page. So typically what I'm doing is wetting my brush, dipping it into the already wet pigment, then wetting it again, and then dabbing off some of the dampness on a paper towel. For larger areas of the stained glass, I specifically wanted the color to be inconsistent. I feel like that's one of the things that I really like about stained glass is the way that light filters through and how some areas can appear more sheer, lighter, and other areas come across a little darker, a little more saturated. And it's all based on sort of how the light is coming through the glass and the consistency of the glass. And I wanted to try to get that feeling across. So for any of those lighter areas that would be letting in more light, I really wanted to try to get across that bit of a transparent, not completely consistent color. For my quote page, I'm focusing on yellow and green. I wanted this one to have fewer colors to be a little bit more cohesive. But for my cover page, I'm going a little more all out, including more colors. I really wanted it to be colorful and vibrant and eye-catching while still having a cohesive color palette. You can see that I go back in a couple times to darken up certain areas, especially the green. I initially started with just a light watered down version of my green pigment, which is sap green, but I ended up deciding to mix it with a little bit of yellow to get a bit more of an olivey brownish green. And I also wanted it to be quite a bit darker in certain areas. So I kept going back to get that depth of color. The process of painting these was so much fun because it really did feel like an adult coloring book. I'd already done the hard work of designing things in pencil and then drawing all the lines with my pen and I was able to just have fun picking which colors were going to go where and actually coloring in each of the little spots. Something that I thought looked really nice, especially on these three tall and narrow panes on the cover page, was to have a bit of a gradient on that main window pane, darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. didn't bother to go back in and go over any areas with my pen after adding the color. I didn't mind if some areas got a little bit lighter because they had a light layer of watercolor over top. With the exception of the M, I really wanted the M to stand out. So once everything was dry, I went back in with my Secura Micron and just outlined that M one more time so it would stand out a little bit more from everything else since it was such a central element. 
flipping over to my calendar spread and this one is pretty simple. I decided to go with a green border and yellow window pane and the header I also thought would be fun green, though I decided to be a little cheeky and do a bit of a gradient from a much warmer yellowy green to a truer green, just because I felt like it. Moving on to my weeklies, I had a lot of fun with color here, just decided to go for it and do whatever I wanted, which like I said, it, it really did feel like doing an adult coloring book, which I enjoyed. I kept mixing different variations of my colors, again, just using those four pigments I started with, but mixing different amounts of different ones together to get shades of brown and green and rust and yellow. For the weeklies themselves, I decided to do a little bit of a rainbow of the colors I chose. So I started with a true green for the first week, and then I moved into a pretty even mix between my dark yellow and my green, and then into a truer yellow, and then into a brighter orangey rust color, and then lastly into a darker rust edging on brown. Before I show you the final results, all the finished spreads, I wanna take a moment to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. I've been a big, big fan of Skillshare for many years at this point, and I'm always encouraging y'all to go check it out and learn lots of new creative skills. I know that y'all are aware that Skillshare has so many classes in photography, film and video editing and illustration, but today I really wanted to focus on Skillshare's hundreds of career focused classes. I know all too well that traditional jobs are not for everyone and Skillshare has so many amazing classes that can help you design a career to fit you instead of trying to fit yourself into a career. I've been a full-time YouTuber for a couple years now, but I always am looking to learn new skills to adjust what I'm doing to expand my creative business and learn from other creative professionals who have so much wisdom to share. And it doesn't have to be a big change either. You don't have to be ready to quit your day job and do something creative 24 seven or become a freelancer or your own boss. It's okay to start small and start to pick up more skills, start to learn more about where you might want to go in the future without making huge life decisions all at once. I wanted to focus on classes that have to do with building a creative career or starting a business and refining your branding. And I took two classes recently that I really wanted to share with you. The first one is creating your dream career, uncover and apply your creative strengths. Holly is so positive and charismatic and inviting. You really feel like you're being invited in to this process where you can take stock of where you've been, where you are now and where you wanna be in the future. I also loved the focus on on highlighting your skills, even skills that you might not consider something that would go on a resume, and to really recognize our own strengths and what we bring to the table as individuals, and then translating that into a career that really fits us. The other class I wanted to mention was Start Your Creative Career, Build a Sharp, Smart Online Presence. This one is more focused on building your website, on analyzing analytics, on making a brand Bible, and the section on making a brand Bible in particular was so fascinating that I decided to start making my own. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare.
And now it's time for the final reveal of all of the spreads, starting with my cover page here, and then my calendar spread, and my fun, bright weeklies. I had a lot of fun putting this together. It was definitely a little bit of a challenge, but also oddly meditative and calming once I got to the painting stage. I love how many possibilities there are with stained glass when it comes to design, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm so, so happy with how my cover page and my quote page came together specifically. I would love to know in the comments what color palette you would choose if you were making your own stained glass theme. And don't forget that not only will patrons be getting the printables of the final spreads, but also printables of just the outlines that they can fill in however they want. So if you like this theme and you want to be able to color it in with your own color palette, consider becoming a patron. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you all so, so much. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you for being a real one and leave some sort of light or window related emoji in the comments so I can give you all my appreciation. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Please do something nice for yourself today from me. Bye friends. <laughs>